Hello, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Kyubong Cho. I have been working in Handong Global University. I have taught uh, several courses of economics in Handong Global University. And today, uh, let me talk about the effect of COVID-19 on fintech industry. As you know, uh, these topics are very hot currently uh, because uh, COVID-19 have been widespread across the globe. And the fintech is called the hottest innovative financial industry. So, uh, I hope uh, this lecture uh, would be helpful for you to understand um, the relationship between two topics such as COVID-19 and uh, fintech industry. And so, uh, let me share and uh, lecture slide. All right, uh, today's uh, lecture uh, consists of seven uh, sectors. Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, explain COVID-19 and the global economy. And then government economic reaction and the financial infrastructure, uh, specifically in developing countries. Also, I uh, will instruct uh, the mobile infrastructure in developing countries in order to explain and uh, uh, facility in for fintech industry. Uh, and then uh, I will uh, explain in the necessity and the overview of fintech. Also, uh, I will introduce uh, the effect of uh, COVID-19 on fintech adoption. Uh, finally, uh, I will wrap up uh, giving you implication of this lecture. And the COVID-19 crisis is weakening the global economy, including emerging economies. Uh, let's see this figure. And this figure shows uh, the quarterly world uh, GDP. And the 100 indicates uh, the standpoint of quarter, the first quarter of 2019. Uh, from the first quarter of 2019, and they'll was a trend and that and the GDP has been increasing. Uh, but uh, the blue line, as you know, the blue line indicates uh, the advanced economies and the black line indicates the world uh, quarterly GDP. Uh, so, uh, from uh, the fourth quarter of 2019, and there is there was turning point uh, because of the pandemic and uh, so-called coronavirus of uh, the coronavirus. Uh, so. Uh, as you can see, in the first quarter of 2020, definitely there was a poor meeting of the GDP, uh, regardless of any uh, continents, such as uh, China, advanced economy, and emerging market and developing economies, excluding China. 
uh, also um, there is an expectation of future economy. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me point uh, the second quarter of 2020. Actually, the more decline of uh, GDP, uh, such as uh, advanced economies and emerging um, market and developing economies, excluding China. Uh, China indicates a uh, yellow line. And so most of economists uh, I expect that there may be a deeper recession caused by a coronavirus. It may be disastrous uh, for some developing uh, economies. Uh, so uh, this moment is so crucial for some countries to overcome uh, this disastrous uh, situation, uh, specifically economy. Yeah, turn to uh, the next slide. Uh, this graph shows uh, the trend of GDP growth and the forecasts. Actually, I got the data from the IMF. International Monetary Fund. And so uh, let's compare current forecast with the recent Great Recession from 2000 to 2000, uh, 2008 to 2009. In those times, uh, the global economy fell sharply, as you can see. Uh, in comparison to current time, there is some difference uh, between two uh, periods. Uh, look at the gray line. Uh, actually, uh, this line indicates a GDP growth rate in emerging market and the developing economies. Uh, the line was a bit higher than that of advanced economy. Uh, you know, the orange line in the diagram indicates uh, uh, the trend of growth, GDP growth rate of uh, advanced economies. What does it imply? Uh, at that time, and during global financial crisis, uh, the emerging market and the developing countries, uh, including China, uh, led the growth of the global economy. In other words, uh, the countries had a crucial role to uh, prevent the global economy from sliding deeper into the depression. How about this time? Actually, this time is different. Uh, the advanced economies are also expected to see a sharp decline how about developing countries uh, developing countries may not withstand such a decline currently and as you can see and uh, this gray line and the developing countries may face sharp decline of the economy. And so the global economy would probably be worse than before, uh, specifically in times of the Great Recession. And so uh, most uh, economists uh, predicted that uh, the adverse impact on low-income households is particularly severe. Uh, that could endanger the significant progress made in reducing extreme poverty in the world since the 
1990s. That would be very disastrous. All right. Uh, so, uh, in order to address and overcome this uh, crisis, a few governments have been implementing policies to directly transfer money to households and small and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, actually, in financial inclusion and the development of payment systems are so crucial to uh, make this money uh, from the governments available to households and business in need. Uh, in several countries, uh, the governments have already paid funds from their social programs into bank accounts. However, there were some troubles for some people to get these funds. Uh, the first reason is distance from their houses uh, to the banks. Uh, so, actually, um, uh, simply paying into a bank account may not be enough uh, because uh, families still have to travel to the bank. But for example, in a study in Mexico, uh, some researchers found that even in urban areas, uh, poor families had to travel five kilometers to access their benefits from the government. Well, it's not easy you know, for the families. This would not be healthy or safe during a pandemic and the lockdown. So uh, that's the second reason. A lockdown for contagion problem. How can we overcome um, these troubles, especially in developing countries? One available solution is for the families to be connected to their banks through mobile apps. And so uh, we can say that on uh, the uh, financial infrastructure, including uh, financial innovative technology, is so important under this situation. Uh, so, how are the current conditions for uh, using mobile applications in developing countries? Actually, the majority of developing countries can be considered mobile first as a payment system. Actually, that's the good news. For many people in these countries, their mobile devices are their sole connection to financial services. Let's see this figure. This figure shows ways of smartphone. Uh, surveyed by Pew Research Center. Uh, actually, and there are many percentage numbers. Uh, these numbers indicate uh, the percentage of adults who say the type of a mobile phone uh, they use. Uh, across uh, emerging economies, uh, smartphones uh, rather than base or feature phones are uh, often the most widespread type of mobile devices. Uh, actually, the uh, Lebanon has highest percentage, wow, 86% of using smartphone. Uh, how about Vietnam? Vietnam has a uh, 67%. 
Venezuela, uh, 45%, Mexico, 42%, Kenya, 36%. Uh, so uh, uh, there is 53% uh, as median. Actually, this percentage is so high. Uh, even though there is a huge challenge in, in, for and poor families to uh, connect uh, traditional banking. Actually, there is good news, uh, specifically mobile infrastructure in developing countries. Uh, so, uh, this means that providing robust fintech uh, solutions to such reasons is not only a matter of convenience, but also one of necessity. Uh, people uh, need more credit and data advances under this situation, a specific pandemic, and to stay in contact as well as contactless microfinance services. Uh, managing uh, this load use uh, using the already stretched infrastructure is a significantly uh, significant challenge. Uh, but uh, one where machine learning, big data analytics, and artificial intelligence can really make a difference. In other words, uh, there is huge opportunity under this situation. Uh, so, uh, uh, let me talk about uh, fintech. Uh, such an industry is called uh, uh, financial innovative sector, as you know. Uh, in recent years, uh, the financial industry has seen fast-growing adoption of financial technology, and so-called fintech. Um, I have uh, adopted, opted, and used uh, the Financial Stability Board's working definition for fintech as uh, a technologically enabled uh, financial innovation and that could result in new um, business models, applications, uh, processes, or uh, products with an associated material effects on uh, financial markets and the institutions and the provision of financial services. Um, that's the uh, rigorous definition of uh, a fintech. Uh, you can say that oh, it's uh, so wide. Yeah, definitely, definitely correct. Uh, so I would like to uh, show uh, this figure. Uh, this figure shows uh, the sectors of fin fintech industry. In addition to uh, the uh, Financial Stability Board uh, definition, the uh, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision uh, used the categorization of fintech innovations. Uh, the figure depicts uh, three product uh, sectors uh, as well as uh, market support services. And these three sectors uh, relate uh, directly to core uh, banking uh, services, uh, such as uh, credit deposit and the capital raising services, uh, payment clearing and the uh, settlement services, and lastly investment management services, as well as uh, uh, why the market and support the services related to innovations and the new technologies that are not specific to the financial sector, but also play a significant role in fintech development. Uh, let's see market support services. 
and there are a lot of sectors such as uh, photo and data aggregators, ecosystems, data applications, uh, distributed land ledger and technology, a blockchain, blockchain, smart country, right? Uh, security, wow, this part is so crucial right now, right? And clothing, computing, internet of things, mobile technology, AI. Uh, actually, uh, and this market support services uh, may enhance uh, the quality of financial uh, services. Uh, so, uh, uh, BCBS uh, surveyed informally uh, its members are uh, asking them to identify the significant uh, of fintech products and the services within uh, their countries. According to uh, the BCBS uh, Banking Committee on Banking Supervision, as you know, yeah, at the BCBS informal surveys, um, the highest number of fintech service providers are in the payments, clearing, and settlement category, this part. Um, followed by credit deposit and capital raising services, and yeah, this part. Uh, within the payments and clearing and settlement category, retail uh, payment services, this part, uh, represented the majority of the uh, fintech firms identified as compared with the wholesale payment service providers. Uh, as a result, this part is the hottest area among uh, fintech companies, right? Um, yeah. Um, the number of uh, market support services, meaning companies that provide support for fintech financial services was second only to um, payments, clearing and settlement services in the number of players identified. Um, it is necessary for you to ask how fast uh, this sector has grown really, right? Actually, let me talk about that. Uh, but uh, honestly, it is difficult to measure uh, the exact uh, volume of the fintech industry. Uh, because there is not accurate data set of fintech industry. Uh, one growth measure available and that can be uh, used is uh, bench capital investment in fintech companies. Uh, so let me show uh, this graph regarding growth of the fintech industry. Uh, as you can see in uh, this graph, uh, there is high increase in the volume of bank capital investment uh, from 2010 to 2015. Actually, deal uh, 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 specifically deal counts uh, according to deal counts. Uh, Three hundred and nineteen in two thousand ten has rapidly increased up to uh, one thousand two hundred and fifty five in two thousand fifteen. How about deal value? And the nine billion dollars in two thousand ten. How about two thousand fifteen? Forty seven billion dollars. 
in 2015. Wow. Actually, uh, roughly four times. Uh, in terms of deal value. Mm, but according to KPM's study, and the value of a new fintech investment fell from uh, $47 billion in 2015 to uh, $25 billion. And this one, in 2016. Uh, why? Uh, and did this happen? Uh, actually, um, this decline in volumes and total capital investment have led some to um, speculate that uh, the enthusiasm, enthusiasm regarding fintech has reached the, the initial peak of the hype cycle. Mm, that is to say, uh, there is typically a tendency to overestimate uh, the implications of new technologies or innovations in the short term. And uh, underestimate the implications in the longer term. Additionally, uh, this figure uh, does not capture internal investment incumbent banks have made it to develop their own fintech innovations as a result of an increasing strategic focus on uh, digitization in the past years. What does it mean? Actually, uh, these numbers, uh, so-called the best capitalist investment, uh, do not include the development of a traditional banking sector in terms of uh, innovative technologies. And so, if uh, included, if uh, the case of uh, traditional banks uh, were included, uh, this number should be increasing these numbers should be increased. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, as you can guess, um, there is a huge volume of a uh, fintech industry. Uh, how about country level? Uh, actually, this graph shows uh, total fintech credit volume by countries. Mm. And this uh, figure uh, is drawn by Brost in 2020 paper. Um, actually, as you can see, and China, United States, Republic of Korea, South Korea, and the United Kingdom uh, have huge volumes of uh, credit originated by uh, fintech industry. Uh, so, Uh, fintech, uh, additionally, additionally uh, fintech lenders made up 8% of new mortgage lending in the United States in 2016. And 38% uh, uh, of unsecured personal lending in Uh, actually, and these uh, platforms are economically relevant in the financing of small and medium enterprises in China, uh, the United States, and the United Kingdom. In the uh, United States and the uh, United Kingdom, uh, such platforms extended uh, 15 
and 0.1% and 6.3% of equivalent bank credit to uh, small, medium sized enterprises, respectively. Uh, let's uh, come back to uh, this uh, uh, graph. Uh, FinTech credit, including credit extended by big tech platforms, has also achieved the scale in uh, South Korea and Kenya, All right? Uh, Brazil and Mexico, All right? Uh, yes, such credit is quite small in much of continental Europe, the Middle East, and the Latin America, uh, generally in far less than 1% of the stock of outstanding credit by banks and other lenders. However, uh, these continents, uh, there may be huge opportunities and to develop the fintech industry, All right? And so, uh, let me share and uh, uh, a video clip. Um, may be helpful um, for you to understand what fintech is, right? Uh, so. Thank you. 
Right. Yeah, this video clip is so useful for you to uh, understand um, the concept of uh, of fintech industry. And uh, there is very good information about uh, um, potential risk uh, from the fintech industry. Uh, but uh, actually, and there may be a huge opportunity under this situation. Uh, so let me talk about the uh, impact of COVID-19 on the fintech adoption. Uh, after uh, showing this slider, you can easily understand why uh, this uh, disaster situation could be an opportunity for fin fintech industry. And let me share. And the slide again, yeah. Uh, so uh, let's uh, think uh, of the impact of COVID-19 on fintech adoption. Actually, Fu and Mishira, uh, uh, 2020 paper, and rose on a mobile application data from uh, 74 countries to uh, document the effects of the COVID-19 on the adoption of fintech. Uh, they found that uh, the spread of COVID-19 and uh, related government lockdowns have led to uh, between a 24% increase and a 32% increase uh, uh, respectively, and the uh, uh, relative rate of daily downloads of uh, finance mobile applications. Uh, in addition, most regions across the world exhibit notable increases in absolute uh, relative and per capita tons. Wow. Uh, these results are so significant. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see the details of the research. Yeah, let's see uh, this graph. Uh, actually, uh, this graph is also um, drawn by Fu and Michiria's paper. paper. Uh, this figure shows the impact of COVID-19 on the adoption on fintech mobile apps. As you can see, uh, the figure uh, presents uh, the average daily downloads uh, for fintech applications across uh, the full country sample. And they note a clear uptrend in download uh, starting from around mid February. Uh, yeah, and actually, and this dash line uh, indicates the first COVID 19 case. Uh, actually, the trend, as you can see, and then there was a high level of increase the daily downloads of uh, uh, fintech mobile applications, right? And so, okay. to see uh, which mobile operating system and dominates uh, the results, uh, Fu and Mishra split uh, the total downloads to Android and uh, uh, Apple iOS. Uh, applications. Uh, actually, uh, you can observe uh, these two dash lines, uh, these two types of uh, dash lines. 
you can observe that the uptick seems to be mainly driven by Android markets with uh, muted or uh, almost no effect for uh, iOS markets, right? And the blue dash line. Uh, and there uh, was a little change. However, and uh, Android finance category at the almost uh, from mid February in 2020 has increased fastly, right? And the figure shows a heightened uh, adoption of fintech applications and uh, a greater push towards uh, digitalization during the pandemic. Uh, how about on this graph? Uh, actually, uh, uh, this figure uh, depicts a scatter plot of daily downloads and the COVID-19 cases across countries. When Mishira uh, removed the time um, dimension from the data by pulling all the data uh, from 2020, uh, subsequently, uh, they also plot the bad fit line and uh, this line, and this dash line. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, observe a general upward trend, as you can see. Uh, uh, this figure uh, gives us a higher level understanding of how the spread of COVID-19 is associated, associated with uh, fintech adoption. Uh, initial evidence, uh, as depicted uh, by the previous figure, uh, suggests that there is a strong positive correlation between and the COVID spread of COVID-19 and the fintech adoption. Uh, actually, a crude analysis suggests that uh, countries above the best fit line show increased fintech adoption, whereas those below the line show low adoption owing to the effects of the pandemic. A lot of reasons like uh, the intensity of enforced lockdowns. The extent of the uh, previous adoption of FinTech or access to mobile internet and the smartphones could be uh, instrumental in driving these effects. Uh, so, yeah, uh, from these uh, evidence, uh, I would like to give you uh, some implications regarding uh, the COVID-19 spread and the uh, fintech industry. Uh, actually, Uh, let me uh, quote uh, the passing Hyder's comments. Uh, Basim Hyder uh, is uh, the founder and the CEO of a uh, channel VAS. And do you know uh, the channel of VAS? And uh, actually, and this firm is a leading vendor of a mobile. Uh, uh, financial and fintech services uh, for emerging markets across the uh, world. Uh, anyway, and the Basim Haider uh, suggested a uh, financial inclusion in developing countries uh, markets has become even more important uh, during the pandemic.
Actually, you know, the mobile solutions are pro proving to be a lifeline in emerging uh, economies. A fintech firms can make use of this opportunity to uh, build their uh, reputations and the emergency is stronger once the crisis has passed. What does it mean? Actually, this time is a big deal, uh, is a big opportunity. And for fintech companies, Yeah, let's go to uh, the last slide. Uh, actually, as Basin Haders comments, uh, there is a good opportunity and for fintech industry in this time. Uh, but of course, we need to approach the business carefully in the present situation. Uh, actually, there are risks of fintech in developing countries. You know, the fintech firms can face huge challenges. Uh, the Economist, the British famous magazine, as you know, argued that it cannot conjure an oasis of credit-worthy borrowers and liquid lenders out of a pandemic desert. It's very critical expression. Around the world, uh, there appears that poor borrowers are going to find themselves in an ever world trouble. The biggest one is that and the loss of a livelihoods is going to worsen poverty. An estimate by economists at the World Bank has concluded that the pandemic is likely to cause the first increase in global poverty since the Asian financial crisis in 1997 to 1998. Actually, uh, the Asian financial crisis was an omen for Asian countries, specifically in Eastern Asian countries. The share of the world's population living on less than $1.90 per day is projected to increase from 8.2% in 2019 to 8.6% in 2020, or from 632 million people to 665 million. Wow, it's disastrous. There might be hardships for small-sized firms too. As you know, both potential and difficult borrowers in developing countries cannot easily repay their own credits in short run, specifically in pandemic season. What does it mean? There are higher probabilities of default in those firms, micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, there is initial M S M E S, micro, uh, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Also, uh, the financial infrastructure seems to be insufficient to guarantee the potential predicaments to be repaid in the short run, such as public agencies support. And so uh, specifically in developing countries, uh, there uh, seems to be a rare 
uh, financial infrastructure, uh, specifically the public agents to support the fintech business. Uh, so the fintech lenders can easily to find appropriate borrowers in this situation. What's more, there is probability of a deeper economic downturn and uncertainty of a recovery. Actually, that's the fear for investors or firms. Uh, finally, roles of governments in each country are very crucial in this situation. Actually, proper policy direction and the bold implementation of the policy can turn the current pandemic situation into really an opportunity for potential fintech companies. So, uh, the people of most developing countries should push up their own governments to implement uh, the proper policy direction and uh, a very bold activation of the policy. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, I have given uh, you an useful information uh, about the uh, relationship uh, between the pandemic and the fintech. Now, hopefully, uh, uh, this lecture will help you uh, study more regarding uh, these topics. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this video. Bye-bye.